This is Troy from Michigan Prospectors. Well, today I'm running some more samples of the Lake Huron sand through my Dream Mat. This is the Dream Mat Combo sluice box I bought last year. I've got the Micro Mat in there right now, which is my favorite for beach sand so far. It seems to be performing well. Anyway, um, this is more blonde than black. This is a sample that I had pulled off the surface more for curiosity um, because of the colors in it. There is some black in here. This was uh, just on the surface layers. Now, the batch I did the other day was down underneath. I dug down a hole, I don't remember, four, five, six inches under and found a layer of black sand and I scraped off that. This batch here is from the surface. And uh, there's more blonde, this was a super thin layer. There was this um, sheet on top with multiple layers of different colors. And I actually wanted to get some of the colors as well. And this this batch right here is all the, the greens and reds and yellows with some blacks. So I can see the blacks coming through right there now. I'm running it sort of fast. And you can see that loading up in the middle relatively fast. I've experimented with lighting in here. Um, let me know guys. I'm looking at my camera upside down. Let me know if the light is better today. Your thoughts. But I'm switching out the way I'm lighting this up. I see a glare from my angle, but it looks like from the camera, from what I can see, it looks better. But I want to run this through. I do see some black loading up in here, though, so there's there's a fair amount of black in here. But I'm going to run this through quickly, as quick as the sluice box will take it down. And then I want to get to the good stuff. This was the, the darker stuff right there. And I'm really curious what that's going to hold. I'm not going to do a clean out though in between. Because um, I highly doubt I'm ever going to go for this light stuff again anyway. I don't know, maybe I should. Maybe I should do a clean out, huh? I think I will. There is some black sand in here. It'd be curious, eh? See what it holds. An experiment is no good without... Figuring out your results. It'd be crazy if this held much gold, though. I mean, that's a lot of white. Anyway, I'll run this last batch through. I've already run one of these Tupperware containers through, and I'll finish this one up. By the way, I sit on the floor here because of I'm in my uh, downstairs, the building I use for an office, and um, to prevent spilling and splashing, I like to run it low to the ground. So I'm sure some people are probably wondering why I'm sitting on the ground, and I'm comfortable. So I guess that's all that matters, right? I'm taking advantage of the uh, the turbulence in the middle, as I mentioned the other day, is really violent right here. And there's almost you can see the surface of the mat exposed right here. That screw creates some serious turbulence, splits the water out in a V away here, so not much water gets here. Most of the water runs down and then reforms right about here and comes back together. So what I'm doing is I'm running, I'll throw a load over here and then I'll alternate and throw a load over here rather than putting it in the middle because then it just sort of sits there. And then I can run a whole lot faster on this. Anyway, let me run this one through and we'll do a clean out and see what we get. There is. There's some black sand in it. The, the upper cells are filling up a little bit, and there's a whole streak of it on the bottom lip of this metal here. We'll be back in a bit, see what happens. Well, that's that. Uh, 
I don't expect to see anything spectacular on first inspection of the cells because I did not see anything the other day either. Um, the gold would be underneath anything heavy. I mean, I can see something in there, but I, I can't tell you what it is at this time. The gold would be down underneath the other heavies, and this is not a mega rich source so much that I don't expect to see anything uh, on top. But anyway, I'll do a cleanup. I wouldn't be surprised to find a couple flakes at least. We'll be back. Well, look at that. Imagine my surprise. I, I saw this is all garnet sand, and I'm thinking, ah, no, there won't be any gold in that. That's all red sand. There's no metallics or blacks in there at all. And then, right here, I don't know if I can get the camera on that right. I've got a new product coming in the mail that it's going to be um, greatly improving my video quality moving forward. So I can't wait for that. My next videos in the future will be a lot better and I'll get some good close-ups of the gold. But see if we can focus the camera on that. I'll be back. I'm going to focus this. Right there. There's two of them side by side. I don't think you can see both. I can't get the camera to focus better in this light. If I have too much light, it won't focus. Too little, it won't focus. Yeah, you can see them. There's two of them right there. So, I'm surprised. This was off the surface. And you can see that's all red garnet sand there's no black in there i am very surprised well there's one i think you can see right by the point of this water tweezer and there's another one right over here to the right in front of it i don't think you can see that one there's one flake and one microfine i don't know if you can see it i'll notice i'll see it when i edit the video i cannot get it with a better light because the camera just adjusts for the light i can see it better with the light by far but the camera just sort of uh, loses it in the flash. Now you can sort of see it. Anyway, so there's four flakes of gold in what I didn't expect to find anything. Now, uh, obviously I'm not going to get rich on that, but it sure is interesting to find out that there was gold in the colored sand. So a fun little test. Now I've got the actual black sands that I scooped off the surface that I'm going to try next. Well, now I'm running the black stuff. Pretty dark. Again, I'm alternating sides. Let that stuff run through. As it takes it, anyway. We'll see what's in here. Now I'm expecting gold. After what I had, the surprise I had on the first two batches that I've tried, I'm expecting gold in this. Now this is surface black sand. The first batch was deep under. The next batch was colored sand, which I did not expect to find gold in. I did that on a whim last second, like. And then uh, this stuff, I scooped off the top in those layers. Now, the reason I'm so excited about this is because this is, I don't know, what is that? A pint? So, my samples are very small. I have two pints of this. I had a single pan of the first sample that I ran. And to find seven colors to a pan on the beach in Michigan, down here, downstate, that's a, that's a surprise. Lake Superior, yeah. Lake Huron, no. Wouldn't expect it, and that's why I'm excited. So, I can't wait to get out there again, depending on the weather and how things go around here. I can't wait to get out there again and run a larger batch. And because also Lake Superior is frozen, longer in the season. Lake Huron I can get to earlier. So, 
Let's run this through and see what. Expect to find gold though this time. You can see this is thick stuff here. That forms a line down the box. It loads up pretty quick with this stuff. That's some heavy black sands there. This has got to have gold, I would think. If the other stuff had gold, this being thicker. We'll see in a little bit here. I'm on the second uh, container. It's not a big sample. So um, anything I do get will be quite exciting if you scale it up to running a sluice on the beach for an entire day, for an example. That's why I'm excited to find anything at all. It means if I scale this up, it'll be some good gold. All right, that's the last of it. I'm just gonna let the mat clear out for a couple seconds. Last ten bit there. And uh, we'll pan it, see what we got here. Well, there are the cons. I'm gonna add a little jet dry before I start panning. I had dish soap in the box, but uh, I always add jet dry to my pan. Sometimes it stuff likes to float a little bit even though. Well, I'm gonna pan this out. Most of that white stuff was underneath the aluminum plate that holds the mat in place. The rest of that was all black sands in the mat. Well, isn't that funny? You can't even see this one. Um, I, mean, I have it in the Falcon pan, and my camera doesn't like the Falcon. Um, it's about, trying to point at it, it's about an average flake for what I've been getting. But that's how it goes when gold prospecting. Isn't that funny? Well, I can't get the camera to see that one, no matter what I do. The camera does not like the Falcon. I used the Falcon finishing pan because I expected a whole lot more gold. And, funny enough, there wasn't. Just one tiny flake. Gold isn't always where you expect it to be. So this was from the black sands from the surface where there was the mixed layers of colors and just one tiny little speck. That was it. The sample where I had, um, surprisingly, with just the colors, the colored sands, the reds and the yellows and stuff, that had gold, which I didn't expect. And then the stuff from deep down under, those two layers that were down underneath, that's where I had the better gold. So now I know where to go with the sluice box and go back and get some serious gold next time. This was just a sample. Why I'm so excited, because it was just an experiment, just a sample I brought home, and I did find gold. And now I know where it's at. Out of the three different samples that I had, the best gold was down underneath. So, there you go, guys. There's gold in Lake Huron. That in itself is pretty cool. Well, please like this video and subscribe if you haven't. I'm going to be getting some more gold here soon. Talk to you all later.